Okay, what we have here is a uh, Magnavox black and white combo. The combo is a reference to the fact that it has a radio, that's AM, FM, stereo, a phonograph, and a TV all combined combo into one unit. Starting on this end, you'll see I have, well, I've got a few, I like to keep a few spare parts thrown in these combos, so it's, you know, if you ever need something, it's kind of nice to know where you get it. You know, one of the things I like to have is a flyback transformer. Those sometimes go bad, and it's nice to have one because they're pretty hard to find. I've got a few extra tubes in here for the TV. I've even got an extra yoke for the uh, CRT. And let's take a look at this. This is this plastic is deteriorated pretty badly. That's the way I got it. Um, I had to find a replacement piece of plastic because that's that was pretty bad. That plastic, all it does is holds the two metal rings together that are used for centering the picture on the CRT. Uh, but I was able to get it taken care of. Anyway, here you have the uh, the phonograph is on this top. If you take a look down there, you can probably get a pretty good view of it. That's the phonograph. And down below the phonograph section, you have some of the speakers. Uh, this uses a 12 inch speaker here, paper cone speaker. It uses a horn speaker, which is a little small metal horn disc in there, and it uses a horn to amplify the sound. And over here you'll see the crossover network. Hope my light's getting that. Crossover network basically just takes the, uh, the signal and splits it up between higher frequencies and lower frequencies, sending the higher frequencies to the horn and the lower frequencies to the paper cone speaker, the 12 inch paper cone speaker. Now we're going to, oh, you'll notice it also has a uh, schematic representation of the uh, wiring for the speakers. It's fairly complex. I mean, there's a lot going on between the speaker select switch, the crossover network the horn and the uh, paper cone speaker, all this stuff is documented, which is very handy because it can be a real tough thing to figure out without it. Okay, now we're going to move down this center part of the TV. And here you see, uh, I believe this is the uh, U941 Magnavox chassis, if, if memory serves me correctly. Black and white chassis, nothing particular special about it. It's vertically laid out. I think they do that in order to make it fit more compactly into the uh, into the cabinet. It does use a power transformer, so it doesn't. It's not a hot chassis. That's a good thing. I like power transformers. Uh, it uses a voltage doubler. This what these two little diodes are about. Voltage doubler to uh, to double the output from the transformer for the V plus. Um, it's got the, one of the doubler capacitors right there. I replaced this capacitor went bad, so I just cut it off and stuck a modern day a capacitor in its place. Uh, I don't remember what the deal was with these other metal can capacitors. I think they were either okay or I maybe one section was bad and I replaced it below the chassis. No big deal there. Um, anyway, oh here's a flyback. Flyback looks to be in pretty good shape. If I can open this without tearing everything up. I opened it earlier. flyback. You see it's got a little bit of drippage here. That's nothing to worry about. That, that's fairly common. This flyback's actually in really good shape. Uh, and like I said, I, even if it did go bad, I have that backup one as a spare. Yoke plugs in, makes it easy to uh, service the, the picture tube. You can just unplug it and the yoke can stay on the, the picture tube. Uh, controls for the TV are up here. On the back and this one over on this PC board that the, the layout is real simple high voltage right here uh, sweep PC boards here all the tubes for the various vertical and horizontal sweep go here this is your IF and uh, AGC and video amp board all on this one PC board and this board is actually the audio but it's missing a tube right that would go right here and the reason it's missing a tube that would go in that big space is because being a combo it, it has a separate audio amp for the TV sound. Uh, Magnavox rightfully used the 
quality stereo amplifier for their TV as well as the phonograph and the AM. That's in contrast to how RCA and Zenith used to do it. RCA and Zenith would have a tube, they would have the audio section there, and they would just switch the speakers from the stereo to the TV amp and back again, which I think is silly because you've got a really high quality amplifier. Why not use that for the TV sound? This makes a whole lot more sense. Uh, anyway, so that tube is missing, and in fact, this other tube in here, uh, I think its only real function is some kind of voltage divider. I mean, basically all it really needs is the audio IF amplifier tube and the gated beam uh, audio detector, which is a kind of detection for uh, FM signals used on later TVs versus the earlier discriminator or ratio detectors used on some early TVs. The gated beam tube is a lot easier to set up. It's got a lot higher amplification. It basically reduces the tube count. And like I said, it's not nearly as complex to uh, align the audio with a gated beam uh, detector. Okay, we're going to move down from this section. Oh, picture tube, of course, 24 ALP. Yeah, 24 ALP4 uh, picture tube. Short neck. I don't like short necks. Uh, I prefer a much longer neck. I just think they're stouter, but this one's okay. I, I get the advantage of it is it doesn't stick out the back, but it's still, it's kind of a hard tube to find because of that short neck. Okay, we're going to move down a little bit more, and I'm going to describe the amplifier. This uses a solid state. Uh, let's see if I get the light in there without causing too much problem. This uses a solid state AM FM stereo. Uh, solid state mean obviously no tubes. It uses transistors. I'm not a, usually a big fan of transistors, but for some reason these old Astrosonics, I like them. They've got uh, big germanium power transistors, and they, they work pretty well, and they have good sound. They don't have a lot of output. If you take a look down here, you can see how small the power transformer is. I mean, that's, that's pretty dinky. So, I mean, really, just how much power can you expect to get? I mean... The audio output is going to be limited to the power in. You, you can't get more power out than you get power in. And I guarantee you that little transformer is not going to produce a lot of horsepower to dry these speakers. But it's a very efficient system, so it does okay. But anyway, AM, FM, stereo, uh, and the phono preamp is in here. Uh, now, what's, what I did differently about this is you'll see this relatively modern-looking piece of equipment. And you'll go, why on earth is that in there? Well, what this is, this green wire is the original output from the gated beam detector. So it comes through the chassis. And this is basically an audio signal that used to go and plug directly into the chassis for the stereo amp. Now, of course, being early 60s, there was no stereo FM audio signal coming out of the TV set. So they had a mono F, uh, FM signal, a mono signal, I should say, a mono signal coming out of the TV chassis. So when it went into the radio chassis, all they did was had a single jack where the TV would plug in. That jack then went to a uh, selector switch where the left and the right channels were connected in parallel. So the mono signal drove the left and the right. So both speakers would have sound, but it'd be mono sound coming out of the amplifier because they were just connected together. Well, what I did was I said, okay, on this chassis, I added a secondary RCA type jack, RCA, not, you know, the, the kind of plug-in jack, a secondary RCA jack. I separated the left and the right in the amplifier. So when you switch it to TV, you now have two jacks, a left and a right. So if for some reason you wanted to get true stereo sound and you had a stereo source like a DVD or a converter box, they frequently have an audio out left right. All you'd have to do is plug this into the box and you'd have true stereo sound. You could still use the RF signal to drive the TV's video content, but for the audio, you could go left right and you'd have true stereo sound. Small distinction, but it's, it's a good one, I think. But when I'm not doing that, which I'm in this case, I'm not using the uh, I'm using the, the audio from the TV chassis. I just put a little Y connector and reconnect it back up. So essentially, this 
is what was done internally in the chassis. I broke it out down here so you could override what was done in the chassis and go true left, right. I think it's a worthwhile modification. It's not that major. It's not really, you know, it's not anything that everybody's excited about. Like, oh my God, he's, he's destroying the originality of the set. Moving on, we have this, the chassis. Uh, now down here, you'll notice, what is this big thing? Oh, I shouldn't have done that. This is an override switch. This is used because this is a remote control set. It uses one of these Magnavox Phantom remotes, two buttons remote. When you have the switch in one position, it overrides the remote. Like right now, the remote is turned on, so it listens to the remote. If I did this the other way, the remote is turned off, and since the set is turned on, everything's coming on right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn the set off because I don't really want that to be the case. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it. Well, here. Turn off the remote. Uh, okay. Now, the way the remote works is there's two buttons. It says loudness on off. Well, what that really is is loudness including mute. It doesn't turn the TV off. The way you turn the TV on and off is the station select. The station select, when it's in the, it's in a, on a blank channel, it turns off. So you have to go like that to turn it on. Now, when I just did that, you heard that noise. Let's turn it sideways. If you go back over here, you'll see the tubes are starting to light up now. That's because I, I got it off that blank channel that it uses to turn itself off. That's right. You have to advance. So if I want to turn it off again, here's what I have to do. Listen. This is me turning the TV off remotely. There. That's right. You have to go all the way around the world. Remember that, that Toy Story thing where the pig says, almost round the, round the horn, you know, like he's going around, he's here clicking the button real fast because it was faster than that than to get up and do something different? That's sort of like what's going on here. You have to go click, 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 click. I'll get off and just click, click, click. So anyway, now we're going to turn it back on. It's only off on that one one blank channel. So we're going to turn it back on again. That's going to be channel two. That's going to be channel three. That's going to be channel four. Channel four is the, ch is the channel that we have content on. So we should be hearing the uh, audio here in a minute from the TV set. Uh, by the way, here is the actual remote unit. If you look closely here, I'll turn out the like the camera right here, that box is a transistorized remote. It has two relays that operate the volume on off and the channel motor, and this big relay, which actually cycles through a voltage divider on this wafer switch for the volume. I'll go ahead and do that so you can kind of hear and see it happen. Ready, set. There you go. I clicked it up to three spots. I'll do it one more time. Go ahead. Okay, so now we're at the full volume, the, and we're going to see how the picture looks. Are you going to stop?